What's up, everybody? Clever Grok back for week, I think, 10 of season 4 of the GTA. Today, I've got coach of the Richmond Rikos, Jeff Spirius, a.k.a. Chase. Hello. And today, we're going to cover the, well, it would have been five matches, but one of them, uh, one of the files got corrupt, so we can't cover that one. Sorry about that. Um, which was the match between the Zubat, excuse me, Zubatman and the Mucks. Zubat Man did win, just for the record. And you can go check that on the site. So, Chase, tell us about this first match between you and Feliday. All right, well, the only things that I really change about my team are my movesets. <laughs> so I knew that I needed some kind Because of, I, I knew that I needed some way of actually taking down his grass types without having to let Volcanion take too much because mm. Volcanion doesn't have a real reliable way of recovery so I stick a nice HP fire on a uh, superior which is pretty pretty standard actually got a really standard set on superior uh, one thing that I really like it just Mega Gyarados does so much work it can learn Ice Fang can it because if it does it takes out half my team right there yeah yeah there you go Ice Fang um, Whimsicott's really useful. Does Whimsicott learn Spore? Mm, I, I believe know. it. I believe it can. I know it at least learns Leech Seed. And Stun Spore. Yeah. So either way, if I if Superior isn't in on that, then it's pretty much something's getting paralyzed or put to sleep. So he's got a really a really funky team that it's hard to play around, and he does this every year. Or every season he's been in it, it's just always really funky, and it's hard to counter because it's so interesting. Uh, other than that, uh, yeah, I'm pretty. I have a lot of counters. The biggest issue, really, is the Skun Tank, and the Skun Tank gets walled by Caesar. So, mm -hmm. unless it has uh, Fire Blast or Flamethrower. Which it did not have this time. It does get but, it, but he didn't bring it. Yeah, he was running a more physical variant because it had poison jab. Yeah, so what I've noticed is, first of all, the switcheroo lagging tail was a nice, uh, li nice move. But <clears throat> I, I feel like he's playing a bit too predictable. Because with Whimsicott, he's lived with Whimsicott every single game that he's brought it, which might also be every single game this season. But uh, I'm not sure if that's always... Like, that's, first of all, kind of predictable. And second of all, the way... You know, I think the biggest thing here is is trying to learn how to predict what your opponent's going to do. In this case, who, who they're going to start with. What What's most advantageous for them to start with against your team? And that is how you should determine what you should start with most of the time. So that's ultimately, I think, what, what happened here is Serp got set up and it just demoed the whole team because he didn't have he didn't have the right opportunity to do anything about it. Whimsicott was the only thing that could, in some universe, stop it because it resisted it. I mean, Pharaoh Thorn gets wrecked by HP Fire, which I knew you were going to bring. Um, Skun Tank... I think it gets Sucker Punch. If it does, it should have been brought. But you had also just a really strong team, and the advantage was very clear. So Yeah, it, it, it was running a physical, so it definitely should have brought Sucker Punch. Uh, the other thing, whenever he used Switcheroo the second time on Superior again, I wasn't expecting that. I just wanted to use HP Fire again. It was just an added bonus. And one thing which may or may not be helpful, depending on the spreads that were being used, but if you're going to run Lagging Tail and then you bring in Ferrothorn to get something like Serp that can do a lot of damage with HP Fire, in fact, you know, one-shot it, you better make sure that you have enough speed invested in it to where you can do something to it. Like, even if it's just Thunder Wave and sacking off the Ferrothorn. But switching it in and then just letting it die was a waste. But that happens. I mean, 
again, you had a really threatening team against his lineup, so it's hard to always, you know, deal with stuff like Superior when you don't have a lot of priority on your team. And in fact, none of his team, except for Whimsicott, outspeeds uh, uh, Serp and Latias, so... And I also was running Latias with a uh, scarf just to make sure that nothing cheeky happened yeah. with that uh, with that Gyarados with its double dance. Mm-hmm. So we'll go ahead and go on to the next match, which is between the New England Paris X and the Haunted Honages. Now, again, I, I really like the Honages team. They have a lot of really scary threats and some okay bulk. Um, Slowbro is really good. Especially in this uh, in this match or this matchup, um, still like I know that I don't think he has another option for a physical wall, but Torterra is just really not the best wall, and so it's just you know th there's a lot of ways in which this match could go one way or the other, so there's not too much you can tell, except for maybe Infernape. It can really put in the work here. Because Mega Alakazam just rips through a lot of that team. But I'll go ahead and start it and toss it over to you. Alright, well, honestly, I don't I, I don't feel like this game should have been as close as it was. Mm -hmm. I feel like the Parasex had a lot of momentum built up at the end. Or at the beginning, rather. Because he's got Togetic, just nasty plots. And then, okay, so Outrage, Dragon types don't affect Fairy. Mm -hmm. That's very big thing. And that just allowed him to get another Nasty Plot up. And now he's at plus four Nasty Plot, and Ale Mega Alakazam just gets demolished. He should have at least gone for Psy Shock. <laughs> yeah. But the Serene Grace drop was nice, you know. That was kind of funny, but at that point... I'm surprised Sloking lived it. That's probably. <laughs> I know. It's, it's got like, what, 180 special defense or something stupid like that? I say, I think it's 150. No, Sloking uh, has like. It's it's 100 base special defense. I thought it was like stupidly high. Because I know it's just the inverse of whatever Slowbro was. And Slowbro's physical defense, surprisingly, is only 100. Huh. Yeah. Go figure. <laughs> But yeah, just the Parasects have so much momentum, and it just keeps building. And I, and it was smart of him to go for the Iron Head. But if he wouldn't have got that crit, it was pretty much over unless Rotom could have handled it. Because I believe Rotom was scarfed. Because Rotom went up against uh, Infernape and was faster. Yeah, I think it was. So, so Rotom would have really been the only thing that could have stopped that Togetic at that point besides Why does uh, Hammer all get, always get crits in this league? I feel like that's all that happened last season when the Gengars had it. It's so good, though. <laughs> I don't You see how much damage it did to that Gligar? <laughs> I don't know if that Gligar... That, if it's not holding you violate, it's doing it wrong. <laughs> but that took so much damage. Maybe it was banded. Who knows? But at this point, the Parasects kind of lose a lot of their momentum. So now they're switching back and forth to get the regenerator Here, bonus on the... I don't the... know. I'm going to jump in and say, why didn't he switch... If if uh, Outrage was already triggered, he should have switched into Togekiss. Like, oh, yeah. It was a free switch in. And then he could have roosted. Instead of taking damage. I mean, I get the whole Rocky Helmet thing. The burn was nice. Burn was nice. I get the Rocky Helmet thing, but... It's not worth you, it. You just lost. You lost a, a very pivotal mon that could have stopped and a rope. No lightning rod. He's running static, which is not good on him, especially if he's not running him bulky, where he can survive hits. Oh lightning yeah, no. Rod would have sealed the deal there because he could have gone for something to take out or at least deal damage to the Excadrill. <sighs> is is frustrating to watch, but that's okay. Yeah, I know it's okay. I even think the Raichu was scarved just because it was still faster than the Rotom at. Uh, and the Rotom was at plus one. It was Scarfed, I'm pretty sure you're right there. Um, another reason why it should have been Lightning Rod is because Lightning Rod buffs the special attack. So it would have been another good reason why to run that over Static. Oh yeah. 
And then Shadow Ball just does so much. I know. And really here, had the Rotom, uh, you know, the the Choice Scarf did come in clutch at the end, but that, that could have ended either way, the way it played out, had it not been scarfed. But that was really good. Yeah, it was a close game, but at watching it at first, it probably shouldn't have been. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. So we'll go ahead and go on to the next match, which is between the Cincinnati Charizards and the Trimillionaires. Both big threats this season. And some really good teams, too. Um, what do you think about their team building? Oh, their team building is phenomenal. Uh, I talk to uh, the coach of the Charizards all the time. We chat about our matches. Aside from ours, surprisingly, he didn't actually confer with me on what to bring against me, uh, which is a little disappointing. But we were just talking about it, he, he, and he texted me. He's like, I have no counter for Cloyster. And I look at him, and I go, you have Jirachi. True. Jirachi lives anything. Jirachi can, I think, live three uh, plus two uh, ice glass sphere shots. Or like oh, three, sure. three doses. Three moves. And not only that, I'm pretty sure it gets like Thunder Punch and stuff like that. So. Oh, it does. It's, it's, it's gr a great counter to Cloyster. But the way that he's been running Sharpedo the past couple weeks is really interesting. Yeah. Because he'll, he'll set up so much and then he'll realize that he can't make it any farther and he'll just kill himself. And kill them with Destiny Bond. It's really cool. Yeah, it's worked out really well for him. Um, obviously, against a team such as uh, the Charizard, you have to bring Cloyster. Uh, your Mega, uh, Mega Venusaur, is going to be great against Sharpedo. Sharpedo, especially, it, it, its main moves, main stab moves, are Crunch and Waterfall. It's res Waterfall, Venusaur Resist. Even uh, Ice Fang, Venus will resist, technically, because of Thick Fat. So at that point, you have to essentially bring it. As, but Victini is such a good counter. They play off each other so well. Everybody has a counter for everything. And it's just it's such a good match. I was, I was really anticipating something good coming from it. Mm -hmm. I, was, I was really... I, for, I totally forgot that Chestnut has Bulletproof. So Sludge Bot, like... That in in having that, it pretty much walls Venusaur, which is hilarious. Oh yeah. <laughs> but it worked out really well because he obviously caught him off guard with that. So, pretty cool. Um, the burn turn one was pretty lucky on the Mew because it ended up mattering. But uh, yeah, I mean the Mux, I mean not the Mux, the Charizards just played so well, and they you know. Like from th from things as small as like the Armaldo having a Citrus Berry, so so that it forced a switch out on the uh, Chandelure, to things like having you know obviously Bulletproof on Chestnut and things like that, and you know for example running Destiny Bond on Sharpedo, <laughs> which I don't know why he maybe it was just a scout, but he could have just gone for like Giga Drain. With Venusaur, and he could have just gone for Crunch first turn instead, if he was just going to go for attacks anyways. It was smart to use the uh, fake out right then, though, or to uh, use protect on the fake out. That's it's probably one of my favorite things to do against something like Lopunny or some some other uh, really fast and really powerful sweeper. Is just prevent their free damage. Yeah. I wonder what would have happened though if he had just eaten the the fake out damage, and then and then protect for protect for the high jump kick to deal damage, because at that point he would have been so low it like an aqua jet would have just finished, but yeah. And then at the I mean, very way, end, it was a really good match. Getting the uh, spikes up early was really important for getting rid of that cloister. Oh yeah, he like runs on hazards. If he doesn't have hazards on the field, he's not doing it right. Yeah, and it kind of goes back to like what I said before that the Tremillionaires don't really have a good way of getting rid of hazards. Um, he's got a good healer, but he doesn't have any. I don't. I think Mew's the only one that gets rid of hazards on his team. Special, well, definitely with who he brought, but I think as far as his lineup goes, that's it. So, and you know, Cloyster only. 
thrives when there's no hazards on the field. Otherwise, it's very risky for him to be able to do what he does. Oh, yeah. So it's, it's, it's an unfortunate crux in his strategy to use Cloyster, it not having hazard removal, at least reliable hazard removal. And we saw that uh, after the uh, shell smash, the psychic just one shot it, mm-hmm. which it might have. Special defense is so bad. Yeah, which I mean, <laughs> it still might have one shot it regardless if it would have shell smashed or not. Mm-hmm. I think it would. But, but at the very end, there's just two pivotal plays: the wish on Jirachi, and the calm mind for uh, uh, Aromatis. If the Charizards would have just Iron Head twice, they would have won. Yep. Easy. And that's just, it just comes down to, like, one or two plays. Yeah, I was really expecting the Charizards to win after watching, like, the first half of the match. I was like, oh, there's there's definitely, you know, like, the Charizards are definitely going to win this. But, again, Aromatis coming, coming in clutch two weeks in a row now. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, one other thing, Hitmonlee does get Rapid Spin. Hmm. Albeit it's not that reliable because it's so frail. Mm-hmm. It's still, in, you know, another option just in case. It would add some longevity if he's not running uh, defog on Mew. Yeah, and it's a which faster I would run. hazards removal person too. So. Yeah, I would run defog on Mew, but as we've seen in previous seasons, he is so unpredictable with Mew, it's crazy. Yeah, yeah. Well, we'll go ahead and go on to the next match, and that's the match between the Alakazam Apparitions and the Wiltshire Wobbuffets. Um, as far as team building goes, I love Mandibuzz, but honestly, Azumarill just rips through this team, except for, you know, <laughs> the good old Tentacruel, but Reuniclus is there to be the only other, you know, thing he needs to really beat this team, so, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, Azumarill just does really good against this team. And then just the rest of the team's really good. Like, there's not any, like, main advantage that sticks out to me. Um, except for Conk. If, if Conk has Mock Punch, which I'm pretty sure in this case Mock Punch was not brought. Um, between, you know, Conk and Tentacruel, that's, like, all he has to be able to handle this team. So, you know, keeping Azumarill alive uh, is a really important thing for this uh, team in order to win, but Azumarill just does so much, it's it's like inconceivable <laughs> the that it would just get wrecked, but we'll go ahead and start it, so I'll let you talk about the match. All right, the very first play, we see the Ice Beam, the failed prediction, and the one shot on Kyron Black. Boom! <laughs> that was so bad for him. It There's was. no way that Azumarill is not banded. I don't know, a huge power play rough would still wreck. It, I just, I feel like that, that bad boy's got to be banded. It, it did is, so much damage. but it would, it would have still killed. But losing Kyron Black first turn was huge, because that's his main form of, like, really strong damage. Yeah. I will, I, I will say, I, I don't know why he set up hazards when Tentacruel was still around, because it gave him a free switch in. And yeah. It, like it was a, almost like a wasted turn, and now that uh, Azumarill is poisoned because of toxic spikes, because uh, you know the Alakazams are another example of not having uh, hazard removal. Um, you know, Azumarill wasn't able to do what he was supposed to do because of it now. But now the only threat to uh, Azumarill is gone, but he kept it in against a <laughs> Mega Blastoise and got blown back. Oh yeah. So sorry. It's a it's a very close now, you fine. It's a very close match. Uh-huh. Like it's back and forth the entire time. Uh one thing that I see is that you have the ability to change your moves on your uh Reuniclus. You don't have to run uh what, Psy Shock and uh Focus Blast or Psychic and Focus Blast. Mm-hmm. So that's just the only other thing I see. Yeah, I will add that the Haze was a really nice play, bringing Ooh, that yeah. specifically for that type of stuff. But it's just, it's really back and forth. Uh, I think that Mog Punch on Conkeldur definitely 
would have sealed the deal for mm-hmm. the Wobbuffets. But it all just it it's back and forth, and it all just really comes down to what plays you make. Yep. We're just setting up hazards now. Yeah, because uh, at this point he's uh he's spending turns, which that was a lucky crit there. Oh yeah. Like it did so much. He should have just gone for Psy Shock because it would have done more damage. The focus was good crit. there though, and he got another crit. So, um. A lot of luck on both sides. In my I would have just went for it again. Like you're yeah. gonna, if you hit, you're gonna kill it. Yep. I uh, I definitely would have brought the or gone for the ice shard there because missing icicle crash. Personally, I like to run ice punch instead because there's no accuracy chance, even though it does less. So uh, the culverberry was nice there. Ended up working out. But the problem is this bulk up conk. Um, it's Broken. not something that Reuniclus can handle. If only you could run bulk up and AV, then then oh. Conk would be indestructible. Oh my gosh, that would be too indestructible. Oh yeah. But the hazards really helped late game mm-hmm. for uh, the Waba Fets. It just, it feels like a really long match just watching it. Yeah, the the septile sweep at the end was pretty nice. Um, ended up coming through really well, like more than I was expecting. I was not expecting him to lose three Pokemon in three turns, and I was like, "Oh snap! This this is about to end." And I was like, "Oh, then, I don't know if that was a damage roll, because um, I don't know. I didn't calc it. The drain punch was nice there. So here here's where it it, it gets questionable because, oh crap." <laughs> uh, let's go to turn 50 I don't know so back <laughs> so it procs the citrus berry when he comes in obviously Weavile's not living any hit and I was like okay mock punch ends the game um let's see there it is so he goes for an icicle crash I'm like okay and he gets the flinch so I'm like oh well he could finish it off now with ice shard with an ice yeah cause an ice shard would finish it it would and Icicle Crash was not going to finish that in any universe, like, w- without that. So, if he had just gone for Ice Shard there, he would have finished it. So, yeah, he missed, but because he didn't either bring Ice Shard or use Ice Shard, or, and if he had used Ice Punch in this scenario, he would have lost. So, really, he he only had that close of a chance because he had luck. Um, but... If he had Ice Shard, which again I don't know, um, that would have given him the game, and it would have been it was still really close, and it was a really good game, and it stinks that it came down to something like that. But if you want to think about it this way, there's a thirty percent chance to flinch, and there's a fifteen percent chance to miss. So <laughs> getting that thirty percent chance to have something positive as opposed to having a fifteen percent chance for something to go negative is pretty pretty fair if you think about it. Especially with the crits that happened earlier, so. Oh yeah, but all in all, like really close matches, matches that were just one or two turns that really defined the ending, really defined who won. Yeah, yeah. Again, all these matches were really close this week. They were really close. I mean, one o, one o, one o. Aside from mine. Five o. <laughs> and then the Zubatman's match with the Mugs was a two o. So, I mean, really, really close matches and all really fun to watch. And, yeah, I mean, there was, like, things that we can talk about say, yeah, this is where things fell apart. But hindsight is twenty twenty. Um, Again, we just bring this stuff up so people can learn. But, yeah, these matches were really close. And I love, like, the, the level of competitiveness that's going on in the league at this point. It's really encouraging, and I'm really excited to see how the tournament pans out because of it. In addition to that, you know, next season when we add... Gen 7 to the mix and everything changes and flips on its head. I'm really excited to see what what happens with that when people don't just know what the, you know, because at this point, season 4, people kind of just knew, like if if you play Smogon at all, people just kind of knew already, like what's meta, what's not, what, how to run things and stuff like that, and with this new season, that there's still not going to be like a, a, that kind of guide for all the Pokemon yet, especially the new Pokemon, but even old as well. So, because everything's getting changed up, like m- m- they're getting buffed, they're getting nerfed. Gengar just loses levitate, it loses 
its ability to switch in on an earthquake. Like, it's crazy. Yeah. Uh, Slush Rush is awesome on Bear Tick. It's just so many new things that'll flip the meta on its head. I feel like the meta's gonna get a little less fast with all this. Well, that's what I think they intended to do with, with uh, if you guys are interested, I, I had three videos covering the, uh, the leaks, like, of the new Pokemon stats, moves, abilities, and then talking about the buffs and nerfs to old Pokemon moves and abilities, and, uh, yeah, I mean, there's just, there, most of the Pokemon are really slow in this generation. Honestly, I think the fastest non-Mega, non, I mean, non, I'm so used to saying non-Mega, <laughs> non-Ultra Beast, non-Legendary Pokemon is, like, 115 or 112. The rest of the, the meta is, like, 80 or less, it's, for the most part. So, I'm hoping that it's going to balance things out especially with some of the priority checks in abilities and moves and terrain and stuff. But I'm also fearful that because speed is so good that it's going to nullify a lot of the Pokemon in Gen 7 at some point. So we'll just have to find out. I'm excited to play it, like the games, and try them out in the league. So it's going to be great. Oh, yeah. Well, that's it for this week, guys. Tune back for week 11. almost said 7 for some reason. (laughs) Uh, Week 11 for next week. And we will see you all later. See ya. Thanks for watching, guys. If you all enjoyed the video, go ahead and leave a like. And if you want, subscribe for more videos. I hope to see you all in the future. And thank you for watching.